Good morning and welcome to another Chateau de Bruges video on a beautiful sunny spring morning. We've had an extra pair of hands with us this week so we've made loads of progress but because some of the tight spaces in the Jeep I've not been able to do much time lapsing but I've managed to keep you updated with everything that I've done in there. So during the week we visited the Mary to drop off some plans for the new chateau entrance and the swimming pool and an outdoor eating area that we have planned. Uh, fingers crossed that they get um, accepted as soon as possible so we can hopefully crack on with them some point in the future uh, and if you'd like to see those plans please let me know so I can put them in a future video for you. And finally, from all of us, can we say a massive thank you to Louis. Uh, we have had an amazing time this week having you here. It's been brilliant. And we really hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Other than that, enjoy the video. Very good. One take, everyone. So the next job for Sorry Jake, the camera is wonky. So the next job for me is to now sand all three doors to again uh, paint an undercoat. Um, to protect the wood. So more sanding, more painting. Here we go. So that's another three doors sanded, caught some of the edges and the cracks and then finally uh, stripped of paint on the metal work. So me and Jake are very, very tired after all of that. Um, but we're very happy with our work and this is all now ready for Primer Coat next week. Hello and welcome back to the King Charles Suite. Louis, what are we doing today? Hello, Jake and I. I'm going to paint the doors. These are the ones that myself and Danielle sanded and prepped last week. So as Louis said, they're ready for a coat of primer. So that's what we're going to do this morning. While these two are painting the doors, I have got my liquid masking tape that I'm going to put on the window. So they are also ready for more painting, guys. Super. Going to be lots of painting this week. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> right. Well done. So just while me and Louis are waiting for the doors to dry, we're just going to add a first coat of undercoat to the windows. Um, but I'm going to make sure I mask and tape all the hinges first to protect all of the hours of hard work that's already been done. So just trying my best to get the tape in as close as I can. And then let's squeeze it in the gap, pinch it all together, and voila.
I'm tired, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, but it's a good day. <laughs> yeah, we agree and I think it's time to go. Yeah, yeah yes. let's call it a day, let's, let's go. Let's call it a day. I'll go get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> So for the rest of the afternoon on Monday and quite a lot of today, Tuesday, we have been painting, uh, but we thought you'd seen more than enough of that, so we haven't bored you with anything else. Bless you, Merlin. Um, so what we've done, bless you again, um, that we've gone out today and we have bought some wood uh, that Danielle would like to create a picture rail with. Um, so you may be able to make out, you may not, that there is a laser coming around the room, um, that is marking where we want the picture rail. I'll tell you more about the laser in a minute. Um, but we're just going to show you what it is that we're going to do with the picture rails. Now, if these bits of wood are 2 meters 40 each, and our wall is just over 5 meters, so if we were to put one bit of wood right into the corner on either side, you can see that we would have only 20 centimeters or so to fill, and it would mean that we would have two cuts right next to each other. So we have instead decided on each wall to place one piece of wood in the middle of the wall and then have our cuts either side so that they're even um, and therefore they don't draw your eye too much to where the cuts are. That makes sense? Yeah. Super. Thanks, Lou. Oh, I look so dirty. <laughs> Okay, so really impressed with the laser so far. Really clear green line and it's, it's staying absolutely level, even with the kind of precarious, precarious? Precarious. Precarious setup that we've got going on. Um, so yeah, really impressed so far and it's, it's coming in very handy. So I just thought I'd take a minute or two to talk you through a laser that Lasku have sent us. Um, I'm aware that they've sent them to another couple of Chateau YouTubes as well. Um, but when they did send it to us asking for us to do a review, I made it clear that I would be doing a very honest review. Um, so that is exactly what I'm going to give you now. So when we opened the pack, uh, we were very impressed. It's nice and sturdy. Um, and then straight away, the thing that you realize is how strong the laser is, you can see it really clearly, which is good. Um, the one negative to this and the stomach that hindered our job while we were in here is that it's not a 360 laser. Um, they do offer a more expensive laser that offers the 360 view, um, but for the amount of things that this laser does, it's perfect for your average DIYer, someone like myself or Danielle. Um, and then if someone was a bit more professional, someone like Dad, Graham, um, then he would probably opt for the more expensive laser. Um, Dad's also tested this in the Jeet a while back, just before Christmas, um, and he's gone into quite a lot more depth about the laser, its different attributes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll flick back to a flashback from December, 
and, uh, and you can watch Dad's review now on the laser as well. <laughs> I've got my trusty old outdoor laser that I've been using for many years for landscaping and stuff, but on this occasion, we're going to use this uh, Lasgu uh, laser pointer that's been sent to us, self leveling, self -leveling laser from Lasgu. Um, looks a pretty good piece of kit, so we're going to try it out and see how it compares to my trusty old laser and um, give you a bit of a review on it. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to keep mine on my hand just to. We've unboxed it already and we've had a little play with it and obviously read the instructions. It's, it's a decent piece of kit and what I especially like about it is it's got the magnetic um, fasteners on it. So if you've got a piece of track or something up already, you can just stick your laser to it and it, uh, it's quite handy in the future. So I'm quite impressed with that already before using it. You can also put it on a tripod as well. So I've just put the two lasers together in this uh, slightly darker part of the Jeep just to compare the the brightness of both the lasers really. Now my fire core is a 3.6 laser so that has the advantage that that's firing right over the top of the camera down the other side of the room so I get a complete coverage but the Lasgu um, at the distance that I've got them there it is actually a brighter laser so it's really quite impressive how bright that's throwing out the laser. Um, self leveling works well compared to the, the more expensive fire core so Really, um, that test quite impressive. What, what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to take them back quite a bit more distance to see um, how far they go in terms of, of firing their lasers. So, so I brought them to outside the Jeep, probably a couple of yards, 10 feet maybe outside the Jeep, and firing back inside, and they're both still really impressive. So it's both still across the ceiling and down the wall, still just as bright of each other. So, yeah, very impressed with it, with the, with the Lasgu there in terms of. Uh, its brightness with a laser. So in summary, having used the Lasgu today to put up the framing, a uh, very impressive piece of kit for the 45 euros, around about that kind of price. Um, it's got some really nice features. Again, the magnetic feature. Um, it allows you to tilt and turn it once it's on its, on its tripod there. Um, Self-leveling as well, and a really bright laser. I've been comparing it up against my trusted old Firecore 360 outdoor laser, which uh, I paid a couple of hundred pounds for, so well, this, co this comes with a bit more kit, so I would expect to pay a little bit more. I think for the price that you pay for this Lasgu, um, really good product. So if you're doing any DIY, you want to get anything straight, you're tiling your pictures or whatever, this is a good bit of kit to use. In fact, the only thing that this won't get straight is Jimmy. Here's a lovely picture sent in by Louis, age 14. Let's add it to the gallery. Why do the French only eat one egg? Because one egg is enough. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so after spending the last four hours, three hours, whatever, trying to get through a 800 millimeter thick wall to get a water pipe through, I've, uh, I've had to abandon that idea. I just can't, I haven't got a drill bit long enough and I just can't knock through the wall and I've dug out so much wall that I'm worried the whole thing's going to fall down now. So 
I was just about to give up and, and have a night of thinking about it when I noticed that over by my original water pipe there was a, a waste pipe going out the wall which comes out the wall on the other side into a, quite a nice con con enclosed trough so I've dug that out um, I've cut off the angle so it's just the pipe going through the wall and I've managed to feed the old bit of piece of water pipe through so I now have a water pipe running through the wall to an area on the other side of this wall where I can nicely connect up a stopcock and that will work okay so all of that channeling all of that digging through that wall ended up being a bit of a waste of time um, but we now have a water pipe which I can get water to the jeep so success in the end Good morning everyone, welcome back to the Jeet. Thought I'd give you a quick update of uh, where I've got to yesterday and the work that I've been completing. So you can see behind me here that I've been working on the toilet area and I've managed to get the uh, walls in at the back of the toilet there and got that partitioned off and the insulation in. So I'll be carrying on with that this morning. Just got one more piece of board up there and a bit more insulation foam to go in. And then I'm going to be turning my tents into the bathroom area which is here and putting in the final wall um, which runs across just this area across here so it goes at a bit of an angle around the shower tray here and then comes back across here so that's going to be my focus today um, so yeah hope you enjoy watching and um, I'll come back to you when I think of a dad joke so I've got all the framing in for the uh, back of the bathroom area which then forms the wall for the bedroom on that side as well um, so you see we've got an angle there where the shower tray is going um, down here and then there'll be a shower screen and there's just enough 600 mil gap there for you to walk in and get into your shower Jake's just come back and bought a couple of bags of sand for me so I'm going to go outside because it's a lovely day and I'm going to mix up some um, sand and cement mix, put the shower tray down and just fill in those areas where, it, uh, where it's outside of the shower tray and where I've taken the floor up. So that's my next job. So I've concreted in around the areas that needed refilling in around the shower tray so you can now see that shower tray nicely fits in that area. That should secure my track that was floating loose a bit there as well so I can now get on and finish off the rest of these walls once that's dried off a bit. Um, also did the part where I've run the waste pipe to the sink uh, which was an afterthought and then also around the bedroom one side of the jeep I've filled in the channel where we dug out the other day in for the water pipe. Um, so that's filled those in the um, the whole area is going to need self leveling anyway when we once we decide what floor is going down and probably irrelevant of what floor going down I'll probably self level up throughout the whole sheet just to give us a nice smooth floor underfoot but that's filled in the big holes so that's another job jobbed. Hello um, so I've just finished putting the last piece of plasterboard on the bathroom shower side area of the um, bathroom so I thought it's about time to give you an update so that's the majority of the plasterboard and insulation for the internal walls are now done I've still got this little section here to do behind me which I won't do until I've put the door frame in so make sure I can board right up to the frame and then I've got the utility cupboard area here as well which I need to, to box in and make into cupboards as well so that's going to re require some timber so as far as for now that is all the plasterboarding done, um, which I'm quite happy about because I've done more than my fair share of plasterboarding over the last couple of weeks. Um, so today I've just ordered the timber for the suspended ceilings, um, shower board to go around the uh, wet areas where the, where the shower is going to be to tile directly onto those um, and some self-leveling compound and, and all the other bits I'm going to need for the next stage of the build. So. Um, moving forward. Uh, whilst I'm on though I just want to apologise um, and say thank you for all those people who shared their comments and uh, and moments of concern following my news of Archie last week. Um, it was a joke 
apologies if that didn't come across. Um, the punchline was that there was no word yet after eating the Scrabble tiles. Um, you, I thought it was funny. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it, Archie's fine. Um, thank you for all those who showed concern, especially Bigsy, Rachel's friend, who actually took the time to email Rachel with her, uh, with her concerns about Archie. It was a joke, Bigsy. Um, so more updates later. Good morning, everyone. A crisp, chilly day. Lovely, sunny, crisp, chilly day in the Jeep this morning. And I've reached a bit of a milestone this morning in that all of the walls have now been plasterboarded. Um, came down to my last piece of board. So my quantity surveying on that was absolutely spot on. So I'm happy with that. So a big milestone. So today the uh, job for me is to have a really good tidy up get out any of the materials that I don't need in here because tomorrow I have a big delivery arriving for the timber for the roofs, all the plasterboard for the roofs and some other big bits and pieces as well that I'm gonna need around the Jeep. So it's all moving forward. Um, super excited to get onto the next stage as I've pretty much had my fill of plasterboard in at the moment. Um, so the plan is to get the ceiling in, get that plasterboard in to hide all the cables away and then it's a massive task of taping and filling um, all the plasterboard. So hopefully I've got a couple of mates coming over um, shortly. Chris Pearson and Johnny Shots are going to come over and I'm going to get them to work on taping and filling all the plasterboard and making these walls look super smooth. So keep watching for that. In the meantime, I'm going to get tidying up and I'll see you in a bit. So I've had a really good tidy up in the sheet. And everything's looking nice and organized and tidy now. It's good. So I can now crack on with something else. And I think the next job uh, logical for me to do is continue with the electrical connections that I need to make. So I've got a few areas around here um, where feeds are meeting supplies. So I need to use some uh, junction wagos just to connect those off. So they're all done and ready to go for when I start putting the ceiling in. So that's my next job. So I'm using junction boxes and wagos, contactless wagos to make my connection. Um, all obviously taking into account the ampage that's going to be running on here. This one is just a, a power radial um, junction box. So it's just taking an incoming power from the consumer unit and joining that down to uh, various sockets and then taking the feedback onto the next set of sockets, which is over in that corner. So that one's all done. Just need to put the lid back on that one now and then that can sit up in the ceiling and be maintenance free. Hello, so good day in the Jeep today. After completing the ceiling electrics and all the junction boxes and stuff, for the lights and the electric connection outside, I uh, decided to turn my attention to the consumer unit, mind the door, consumer unit, and started to get things in place in there. So I've now got my three phase circuit breakers for all three phases in there. Uh, the plug socket you see is just temporary at the moment to, to power my work light. Um, so tomorrow, uh, depending on what time my delivery gets here, but I'm going to be start to look at my uh, load layout that I did on my laptop the other day and um, start putting in some of the lightings and the electric circuits and bits and pieces because I can always isolate them off here, not make them live at the moment until I've got the sockets and switches and made it all safe at the other end. So it'll be good to get that all wired up and or at least break the back of that so I know where we are. Uh, as I said earlier, tomorrow we've got the delivery turning up of the ceiling timbers, the ceiling plasterboard, the shower board for the around the shower, and some other bits and pieces. So that's going to be quite a big delivery. Hopefully that's going to be in nice and early. So I may even tomorrow crack on and start putting the timbers up for the ceiling. So all moving forward. Good day today. It's five o'clock. Time for an aperitif. See you tomorrow.
Good morning, it's a beautiful spring day and good to their word. Point P have just delivered the uh, products that I was talking about. So we have a timber for our suspended ceiling in the sheet, some self-leveling compound and the um, shower board for the shower area. So unfortunately they couldn't get the truck in the narrow entrance which comes in by the sheet. So they had to come into our bigger entrance and just drop it here which means uh, myself, Louis and Jake need to now carry this around um, to put it by the jeep where I need it. So they're just, Louis's just having his English lesson. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Hello. <laughs> go, go, go. This is a bit weird, I'm a stranger. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Hello. <laughs> sir. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> what does the best activities to do, please? You should do paintballing. It's really fun. Where is paintballing? Paintballing is just around the corner. Oh, thank you. On the corner. Just, just around the corner. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Hello. Oh. Hello, sir. Hello. What are the best activities to do? Paintballing is really fun. You should oh. definitely try it. Where is paintball? Paintball is just around the corner. Oh. How, how long? How much does this activity? <laughs> how? How long? How long does this activities to do? Hello, hello. What are the best activities to do? Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's you. I've literally said that with a straight face. Hello, sir. Hello. What are the best activities to do, please? I would highly recommend paintball. Or is paintball? Paintball is just around the corner. Oh. How, how long does these activities to take? <laughs> no. no. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Hello. What are the best activities to do, please? I would highly recommend doing paintball. Race paintball. Paintball is just around the corner. How long does this activity, this activity uh, take? It takes about two hours. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. That's all right. Your English is very good. Thank you. Good day. <laughs> good morning. Good day. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the consumer unit is now connected. All the cables from around the sheet are now connected into the consumer unit. Uh, I haven't made any of them live yet because obviously I've still got the first, uh, the second fix to do on the sockets with the plates and things, but it means I can now check continuity and I can um, get everything ready uh, for when I want to go live so I can run my final checks and all should be good. So happy with how that's gone. I think it looks really neat and um, yeah, it's another big job ticked off the list. Okay, so it's Friday afternoon and we've just dropped off Louis to go back to Leon. So thank you again, Louis, for coming. We really enjoyed having you here and you staying. So thank you very much. Um, there's still work to be done though. So we are, myself and Jake are continuing in bedroom four. And the first job of this afternoon is to put some plasterboard in this area, which is going to be our dressing gown alcove. So we're going to pack that up and then it's ready for painting and all that jazz. So in reality, we could just put plasterboard straight into this alcove because there is wood 
going all the way around it from the tests already. Um, but as Danielle said, we do plan to hang the dressing gowns in here um, and just doing it on a plasterboard screw probably isn't enough um, security to hold them up. So we're going to um, add some more wood into this area here so that when we do hang the dressing gowns, all we can then do is drill through these um, and that uh, noggin, I think they're called, um, will therefore give it much more strength to hold the dressing gown. Shout out to Danielle's dad, Ian, for uh, giving me a miniature spirit level years ago. I absolutely cherish this because this is brilliant for little gaps, uh, which is what we have here. So I have the first one on the right hand side. It's going to go in nice and snug, obviously, because I measured it and I cut it. Uh, and then, of course, it will go in. and be perfectly level. So we're not exactly sure when, uh, but my phone did die at some point during that time lapse. Um, so we're not sure if you saw everything, but the plasterboard is now up. Uh, you may or may not have seen that we insulated in between the two sheets of plasterboard. Um, you should have noticed that there it was... Um, soundproof. Soundproof, thank you Danielle. Soundproof, because um, we obviously took into your comments that you mentioned that because behind this wall is another room's bed, um, we needed to make it as soundproof as possible, so we have done. Um, there won't be anything loud happening here, hopefully. The toilet and the sink are in other places and the shower is in the opposite corner. So hopefully that soundproof barrier is going to be enough. And then the only thing that will be here will be the dressing gowns. So they will be still and, uh, and hopefully people in Lutece will not hear anyone in bedroom four. Another job jobbed. Another job jobbed. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that extended version of life here at Chateau de Bruges. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe and ring the notification bell. You should know that by now. Um, and if you're really enjoying our channel, please tell as many people as you can so they can also tune in and enjoy us. We're going to be really busy with this coming week. We've got some guests coming to stay with us at the Chateau, um, but hopefully we're going to stay busy with the renovation in our downtime as well. And we seem to be very popular on the hosting student front. So we have another student at the end of February, which we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. Until next time. Bye. See ya.